right? Let's take a particular setting, the, the drink store, right? The coffee store in the canteen, in the university. So that calling population will be people who may want, but not right now, not immediately, but just in time, may want. So primary school student may want to drink coffee, but they are not eligible. So you have to be eligible. You also must have potentially the need or want for the service, even though it's not now. Example, um, John, a university student in NTU, might drink coffee, all right? Uh, sorry, first of all, he is a university student. He might drink coffee. If that is so, then he is part of the calling population. But if he is allergic to coffee, not just because he doesn't like the taste, but by persuasion, he may be able to be uh, persuaded to drink coffee by his friends. But he cannot, he simply cannot. He will protect his body by not drinking coffee. If that's the case, then he is not part of the calling population, even though he is a university student. All right. So now we get an idea. All the customers in the calling population, they are eligible and may desire the service in the queue system that we are examining. So the queue system we are examining is very specific. It's only the coffee store in the university canteen. The, the vending machine is another server. And if people queue up there to buy drinks from the vending machine, that's another queue system, even if that is in the university campus. So that's calling population. Then we talk about the arrival process, which is basically spontaneous. And this word should be should be written out so that you understand that it is a spontaneous desire to want to join the queue. Like I said, suppose it's not, it is artificially arranged. Hey class, let's all buy drinks. No, 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 don't get, don't get a representative to buy 60 coffees for our class. Uh, let's all go there and queue up. So then because of my command, my arrangement, my encouragement, everybody goes. Then that is not a spontaneous because some of you may not like to go, may not like to drink coffee, but hey, let's study the process. So let's just join for the sake of learning. If that's the case, then it is coerced, it is encouraged, it is artificial, not spontaneous. If that's the case, then uh, the theory prediction will not match reality. Okay, so the arrival process needs to be spontaneous. Uh, and the in, in let's let's just take another more concrete example. John is a university student. He likes coffee, but not right now. He attends the, the class. Halfway through the instructor said, let's have a break. He suddenly, all right, spontaneously wants to take advantage of this to stretch his muscle and also buy a cup of coffee. Now, then he now is walking towards the canteen. He is part of the arrival process now. Clear? So he, this customer is not yet in the queue system, but we say, because he, we expect this guy to come into our queue system. So in tracking his movement, we say that John is part of the arrival process. Now, why do we have this arrival process? we don't really have a departure process, right? Because arrival process affects lambda. Uh, uh, arrival process affects lambda. Think of John's spontaneous desire to want coffee like as if it's a radioactive element suddenly decaying and suddenly having nuclear uh, fission, right? Splitting apart or wanting this coffee thing. Um, so if the calling population is, is all these radioactive particles, you know, tinkling with potential desire, the tinkling, the sudden, uh, suddenness of the wanting of coffee is uncontrollable, is random, but will occur, will occur, we know that. So all these tinkling, all these rates of tinkling, rate of wanting to go to the canteen to buy coffee will be part of the arrival process and therefore contribute to lambda. Okay, and in practice, this arrival process gives rise to our estimate of lambda. Because if lambda needs to be a long-term average and we may not have the time to long-term calculate the exact lambda, we may take a sample and approximate. So uh, part of the arrival process, as part of it, 
John walks towards the canteen, but it's a long journey. Halfway through, if he receives a call about his uh, interview, his internship with a blue chip company, right? He will, of course, answer the phone. Suppose the company says, uh, I'm so sorry because of uh, COVID-19 measures. The earlier internship that we promised you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, we have to uh, talk to you again perhaps next year and then see what opportunities the company uh, may have. Thank you very much. After the call, John, John's taste buds basically get neutralized, right? So he doesn't want coffee anymore. So he stops and U turns back to his class. If he does that, if he does that, he said to balk. Okay, he it was part of the arrival process. Now he isn't anymore. Of course, the call is just an excuse. Uh, let's say he looks at his watch. Oh, only one minute left. I don't think I have time to wait for the queue and all that. Goes back. Maybe he was walking. He saw the long queue at the canteen store. Not nowadays, perhaps, but last time, right? Uh, before the safe distancing measures. He saw the long queue at the store. Uh, I don't think I like the queue. So he goes back. For many reasons, halfway through the arrival process, he can turn back. When he does that, he's said to be balking. Now, the rate of balking can affect lambda because I originally counted you as part of lambda. Now, there's a chance that you may not become lambda, right? Uh, if this probability is high, then we need to account for it. And even if it's low, if you need some precision in your estimates, you better get a nicer lambda by subtracting off those who balk versus those who don't. So that's one. Now, if John says, oh, what the heck, I still have plenty of opportunities, that's okay, no problem. I still get my coffee. So he continues and joins the queue, right? And then he becomes part of the queue component of the queue system for the coffee shop. That's fine. But halfway through, he receives a call from his friend while he's in the queue while in the queue right while in the queue he receives a call and his friend says hey you know what come back to to class now uh it's uh, it's important that you come back we need to talk to you now if he responds to that call he drops out from the queue then he's said to be reneging from the queue system okay reneging when he's in the queue Balking if he's not in the queue yet. Same phenomenon. John wants coffee. John now doesn't want coffee. Okay, he hasn't bought yet. But it happens at different uh, timing in the sense that he, he, he was uh, before the queue and now he's part of the queue, right? We use different terms to refer to the same action done by John. That is uh, relinquishing from buying the coffee. So, uh, since you are now or will become the expert in Q theory, we need to understand the terminologies clearly. Clearly, right? So bulking, reneging. It's written here, but uh, just to give you those examples. All right. Now, if he continues to queue through without interruption, and he purchases coffee, then he leaves the queue system because you're interested in studying the queue system. But physically, he leaves the coffee store, right? And uh, for different queue systems, the customer may return to calling population or leave. All right. Sometimes artificially, sometimes by nature of the queue system. In John's example, when he purchased his coffee, is it, is it true that he forever, from there on, will never want to buy coffee uh, from this store anymore? Not quite yet, right? Because he's still a student he may still have the need to buy uh, coffee from this particular store and therefore uh, participate in this particular queue system. So to say that he has no future need for the service from this particular queue system, not true. So he goes back to calling population. Now, suppose if we uh, talk about funeral parlor. <laughs> uh, once you come in, you receive the service and bombment, everything, then departure, then yes, no future need. Okay, very drastic example. But uh, it can also be that um, the customers get transformed in a factory sense. 
to products and the product itself is no longer part of the calling population it doesn't quite qualify right finished product is not raw material then uh, we will have that as well okay so let me just uh, talk about this Q discipline this is just a quick slide showing you or trying to impress you with the fact that we will just be emphasizing how uh, how the on, on the first come first serve rule on how customers will be served. If you come first, you are at the front of the queue, you get served first. Very natural, very frequently encountered, uh, definitely worth our time to know better. There are other order of servicing customers. Some are variations, some flip it totally upside down. For example, um, have you ever encountered last in last come first serve kind of queue all right so uh seldom but sometimes it may apply um i did personally encounter a particular food store uh this let's just say he was a man by a grumpy old man right so he was dishing out very delicious dishes rumored to be so so i queued up and wanting to try it out but uh turns out that i was waiting and waiting for my turn to order then here comes this guy who just chucked in and ordered so i was watching how he would react he took order and then i was watching whether he would just write down so that he maintains a queue and he uh <laughs> prepared a sort of a package and then gave him and then took the money that means he served him first and i was queuing up so that was more like a last in first serve uh basis of uh ser servicing the queue and of course it is not making all the customers who were waiting very happy and uh the last i know i think he was not working in the store anymore no so um there is some uh suitable uh, circumstances and environment in which you apply certain rules. Now, uh, just a quick sort of uh, example to expose you a little bit more to different ways. What do you mean by uh, not first come first serve, right? We know last come first serve is wrong, but what about other things like round robin? Round robin basically turns a queue into a, a circle in the sense that if you well this is this this sounds not more like for non-human kind of situations so for example in computer systems where you insert a, a task to be processed by the computer then it is possible that the computer because of multitasking will serve a few microseconds for each task and then since the tasks are not complete yet within a few microseconds and uh, the computer will circle back and then start performing another my few microseconds on the first task, second task, and so on. So that will be round robin. Plus, in those cases, uh, there can be also preemptive multitasking in the sense that the task is not done yet. The computer will uh, will not continue. Will not continue with the task. Uh, for example, it is painting the picture as part of the Facebook browser. Paint, painting, painting halfway, it will not, uh, uh, the, the, the allocated 10 milliseconds is up. It will not overwrite the timer and continue. It will just put this aside, chuck this aside, and that's called preemptive. I preempted the task, put it aside, and continue with other tasks, do a little bit, put it aside, and so on. Now, I know some of you might also do that for your homework. You have uh, three different homeworks all due this week from three different courses. So you might do question one each just so as to, you know, uh, uh, flip your mindset a little bit to stay interested to work through the homeworks. So that would be preemptive, right? Because you're not done with the homework, but you switch to another question two of the next course, question three of the next course, and then come back again. So round robin, preemptive. Now, priority might be applied to human cues. The VIPs will come in even though they came in last, but because of VIP status, they get served first. So all these will affect all these different ways of uh, discipline to serve the customer queue will affect the counting and timing right, of um, customers in the queue.
because VIPs tend to enjoy shorter waiting time. And that is to respect the fact that they are VIP. Right? So those are the kind of disciplines uh, evolved or created to meet different requirements.